Welcome back ladies and gents. Today we are talking about some diet hacks because I find that most people don't really care too much about the science behind weight loss and would prefer to get more of the application based information. So in this video, I'll cover five hacks that you can use to make your dieting phase easier. All right, so jumping into number one is eat more protein. And before you click away, because I know you've heard this a million times before, I promise the other four points are going to be more interesting. But I have to put this at number one because it is a great hack and it serves a few different things. Number one, hopefully when you are dieting, you are doing some sort of physical exercise, preferably resistance training so that you can maintain or build in some cases um, some lean muscle mass as you diet because not only will you look better overall, but studies have shown that higher total lean muscle mass to a certain point and having lower body fat is linked to better overall health and reduced risk of all cause mortalities. Now, with that said, protein intake of 0.6 to 1 gram per pound of body weight can help your body maintain as much lean muscle mass as possible. And since lean muscle mass burns more calories than body fat, you're going to be able to eat more calories and still lose the weight if you have more overall lean muscle mass. So that's the first reason why you want to eat more protein during the diet. The second is it's more satiating. Protein is the most satiating macronutrient and has been shown to keep you feeling fuller for longer, which means you won't feel like you'll need to eat as much. Simple as that. More protein equals feeling fuller for longer. There are some exceptions to this, which I'll cover later in the video. And lastly, the third reason why eating more protein is a diet hack is because protein also has the highest TEF or thermic effect of foods. This means that if we eat the same amount of carbs, fats, and proteins, it'll take the body most energy, aka calories, to digest and break down protein. And as you can see in this chart, TEF makes up around 10% of our total daily energy expenditure. So if you think about it, if you burn 2,500 calories a day, 250 calories will come from digesting your food, which is a decent amount. So if we consume more protein, we can increase that number even more. And although the increase in TEF and metabolism from maintaining as much lean muscle mass as mentioned earlier isn't going to make the biggest change compared to actually eating less, these small hacks make a huge difference as you go through your diet. These two things alone can be the difference between being able to lose weight while eating Oreos at night and not losing any weight. But anyways, moving on to the second hack, which is prioritize eating lower calorie dense foods and increase your fiber intake. If you were wondering what low calorie dense foods are, they're foods like popcorn and watermelon. They have a lot of volume for how many calories that they contain. If we look at 500 calories worth of Oreos versus 500 calories worth of popcorn, it looks very different. And when we look at the popcorn, what it does is it visually looks like more food. So you feel more satisfied and you don't feel like you're on a diet. And number two, it actually makes you feel fuller. But with that said, you also want to focus on eating foods that are higher in fiber because fiber is good for you in general, but also because because again, it helps you to stay full. And remember in the beginning I said there's an exception to higher protein in feeling full? Well, according to some studies, protein satiating effects significantly decrease once the body has had enough protein. And that amount according to Menno Henselmans is 1.8 grams per kilogram or 0.8 grams per pound of body weight which means if you eat more than 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight, it won't really keep you feeling fuller. And I say that because I don't want you to think that more protein is better there is a limit. So instead, you want to focus on eating foods that are higher in volume and fiber to keep you full. And the best foods to do this are fruits and vegetables, but more vegetables like spinach, celery, broccoli, etc. They have a lot of volume for how many calories that they contain, and they also have more fiber than most foods. And they're just more nutrient dense. So, so far, the recommendation is you should eat 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight and then prioritize eating lower calorie dense foods that are higher in fiber, which usually comes from fruits and vegetables. Now, moving on to the third hack, which is drink more water, but that's too boring. So I'll change that to drink more diet sodas. Now, if you're like me and water is your preferred beverage, you don't have to drink diet sodas. But if you're someone who is used to drinking a lot of sodas or have cravings for sweets, diet soda is an amazing diet hack. Diet soda gets a bad rap because it uses artificial sweeteners and people think it'll cause XYZ health issues, but there hasn't been any replicated research showing any of these effects so far. 
I just like to think of it as we're just taking advantage of the benefits from the advancement in technology being able to produce things like artificial sweeteners. And studies have shown that between the diet soda drinkers versus the regular soda drinkers, and in some studies, even against the non-soda drinkers, the diet soda drinkers were able to lose more weight and keep the weight off better than the other groups. And this may be because a diet soda can satisfy your sweet tooth without any calories, which helps you to feel less restricted in your diet, which is key to a successful long-term weight loss and weight loss maintenance. All right, and moving on to number four is using smaller plates, smaller utensils, bowls, but smaller everything. What this does is tricks your mind and also helps you practice restraint. If I give you a small bowl and said you can fill it with as much food as you want and you can eat it, even if the bowl is small, you feel more satisfied because in your mind, you can eat as much as possible. Versus if I gave you a huge bowl and told you you can only fill it to a third, even if you eat the same amount or even more with a bigger bowl, you'll still feel like you're being restricted because of the mindset. And using smaller everything like utensils will force you to take smaller bites, which can help you slow down your eating, which also helps you to feel fuller compared to eating faster. And lastly, the fifth hack is eat similar foods all the time. Get in the habit of eating similar foods because once it becomes a routine, you don't have to think too much about your diet and it takes the stress away from thinking about what to eat, what not to eat, when to eat it, and so on. I pretty much eat the same three breakfasts almost every single day. Protein and oats with eggs and fruits, protein pancake with eggs and peanut butter or leftovers, which I guess could be anything, but if there's no leftovers or I don't want to eat the leftovers, I know I can either make oats or pancake, which takes the part where I have to think about what do I want to eat versus what should I eat. And since I eat the same foods every day, I know the amount of oats and eggs I eat every day, which allows me to keep track of the calories in my head. And that's one of the main reasons I recommend everyone to track their calories and log them for the first two weeks so you can get an idea of how many calories um, certain foods have. For example, I eat eggs very often. So knowing that one egg has around 70 calories with 7 grams of protein helps me to have an idea on how many calories I'm eating for a meal with eggs. This just allows me to eat my meals feeling good that I still have X amount of calories left over for the day and still lose weight. Tracking calories is not part of the five hacks, but it's definitely a useful tool to learn about calories and macros in the beginning. Well, ladies and gents, that was the five diet hacks. I hope you found at least one new hack that you can use. And if you're using all of these hacks and still not losing weight, then hit me up on any of my socials so that we can figure out where you can improve on to make progress. All right, but anyways, until next time, have a great day.